you know, people ask, well, what about this style? And I tell them right off the bat, like from someone who used to spend all day, every day in the kitchen, cooking up wonderful dishes, it's boring. But after feeling the way I feel, I'm not going to go back to that. I just can't. I feel too good. I'm addicted to feeling good now. I don't, I don't eat for social or emotional or addiction reasons anymore. I eat just to nourish my body and that's it. Okay. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, happy uh, Thursday. Uh, we have a guest today, Allison. And Allison, where are you located today? Um, I'm in Western Maryland. Western Maryland. Out okay. in the uh, Appalachian Mountain region. Okay. So I guess where that's where the tougher people are, I'm, I'm told. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> anyway, well, welcome. Thanks for doing this. So uh, so tell us uh, a little bit, I guess we'll just get going into this. So tell us a little bit about your background. What, uh, what uh, t- I guess, Jackie, you could start with your journey, I suppose. I started with, uh, let's kind of back up. I started with carnivore last May. I had really hit a low point in my health and I had heard of it about six months beforehand and I was super resistant to it. (laughs) And I was like, there's no way I can't eat this boring. But when you hit rock bottom is what I felt like. I was like, you know what? I've tried everything else. I'm going to do it. Um, What kind of led me up to that point was I've always been on the go. I've always been on the move. I've never, you know, been one of those people that sits around and stays in bed feeling sorry for myself, whether I'm sick or not. But I've always been kind of sickly, even in like high school, really flared up. I never made it through a single year without getting a a medical waiver because I'd missed more than the allotted 14 days. I did focus on diet my whole life and it just never improved. Nothing seemed to ever get better. It was always these nagging little things, um, chest colds, head colds, just chronic. I went to college with a box of tissues with me the whole time, (laughs) Um, just always congested and never really getting any answers, never really getting, I got allergy tested multiple times and no one ever really could tell me why I was always sick like this. So, I mean, it's just, just chronic illness all the time, basically colds and congestion, sinus infections, things like that. Or what was it? What was the deal? I have no idea. I had no allergies. They couldn't test me for anything. I would just get sick. And then I also had about as soon as I started um, getting my menstrual cycles as a teenager, right shortly after I started getting chronic cysts on my ovaries and they weren't, it wasn't PCOS. I was tested for that. It was negative. I had a baseball size cyst removed. I had golf ball size cyst removed. And then in between, I would have some that would just rupture eventually on their own. And the doctors were like, birth control, birth control, that'll stop it. That didn't stop it. So they told me to take the packs, but don't take the placebo leak. Just don't ever have a period. Just keep going which seemed to work for a little while. It also seemed to give me anxiety. So they're like, oh, there's a medicine for that too. This kind of continued on until I met my husband and I was finally able to come off of the birth control, which then I was able to come off the anxiety medicine. And we was like, wow, this is, this is normal me. Um, and I was about in my late twenties at that point. And, but I still had, you know, typical female I guess you could call it just uh, the general symptoms once a month. Mine seemed to always be more severe. It seemed to be a week of, you know, massive acne breakouts. I've had adult acne my whole life. Those huge cystic type acne on my chest, my back, all over my face, especially the back of my hairline. And, you know, cycle time would come around. I'd gain five pounds of bloat. I'd be like so exhausted. I couldn't function the first day. And my face would get worse than normal. And it was just a mess. I'm so shocked. I just assumed that was normal for women. We have all these products to treat all these symptoms. Isn't that normal? And then I started carnivore in May. And I mean, it's a lot of information to put out there, but I, I have a, a, a healthy three-day cycle with no pain, with no bloating, with no fatigue, with no mood swings, with no acne, with no pain. I, I, I used to have to take a leave every four hours um, for a couple of days to get through it. And now I have no pain. It's amazing. I kind of, I, I look at some of these ladies out there that are on carnivore during pregnancy and I'm like, you know, stick with it. This is amazing. And I, I can't believe that women haven't been told, like no doctor ever told me your cycle is actually not supposed to be miserable. It's not supposed to be, you know, 
tell week once a month. It's not supposed to go through all these crazy changes. So that's, that in itself has been a miracle. The fact that your life is not turned upside down five to seven days out of the month. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, I mean, obviously I can't experience, <laughs> I can't directly experience that, but I, I feel for a lot of women that have a really, really tough time of it. And, and it's not normal. It shouldn't be normal. You, you think about it. I mean, why would, why would we, 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 we be designed in a way that was just so miserable for us, you know, 25% of our existence, you know, as a female, and it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it's normal. I mean, I should say it's common and it's common because we are trying to adapt to a, you know, just a, a poor nutritional strategy. I think, I think the general diet is just not, humans are not adapted to it very well. And we have all these things that break down when that occurs. And I think that's just one sign of that. And there's so many others out there we can talk about, but anyway, yeah, sorry to interject I, that, I but. learned, I learned when I was in my probably early thirties or so that sugar really like super sweet sugars, refined sugars would trigger the cysts. So, I mean, I haven't had a soda in 16 years. Why was I not healthy then? I, I still couldn't figure it out. So I went through these different phases. As a teenager at age 15, I decided I was going to, I was heavily influenced by a friend at school. I was going to be vegetarian. So I was vegetarian for almost seven years. I would eat some chicken and fish occasionally when my mom would make me, um, but I didn't have any red meat for seven years. And then Despite the fact that I seem to get sick a lot, I got a job as a paramedic with the fire department <laughs> and I worked there for 10 years. And luckily in my first year there, the guys kind of shamed me into eating some steak and bacon. And I, I thank them to this day for that. <laughs> but I still was like, gain, I gained weight, you know, as a, as a woman, now I'm entering my twenties, I'm starting to gain weight. I don't have that teenage physique anymore. So I started working out and stuff and I was low fat, everything, skim milk, um, whole wheat pasta, ground chicken instead of ground beef. You know, even though I would eat meat again, I didn't, you know, do a whole lot with it. And I got nowhere and I couldn't understand why I was getting nowhere. I was eating low fat, everything. And I worked out really, really hard. I tell people I flipped my age now. I worked out really, really hard when I was 24. I got on the PT committee in the fire department. I was training other people. I was exercising, you know, hours every day. And I did get into really great shape, but as soon as you stop, it goes away. As soon as you stop that daily, you know, crazy exercising, it's gone again. And so then I, you know, my husband and I started eating super healthy to try to have a baby. Um, so we, I, about my, I kind of stopped the low fat stuff too, but I did realize that was about the time one of the fire captains one night, um, we were making coffee after dinner in the station and he saw me make my cup of coffee and he said, did you want any coffee with that sugar? And I was like, I didn't realize like how much sugar I'd eaten until he made that comment. And then I started looking at things, started cutting out, you know, sugars, you know, the sugar in the coffee, sodas and all those things. And I thought, okay, if I just cut out soda, I've heard if people cut out soda, they're fine. I was able to maintain my weight, but I wasn't at a healthy weight. So I got involved and started reading Weston Price and Sally Fallon, the Nourishing Traditions books. And for probably the last 10 years, I have been super vegetable loaded, fermenting all these foods, um, making my own bread. If I have bread, I make it from scratch. I made, you know, all these different things. I'm, I'm really working. I'm, in my opinion, if you work hard enough at something, it's going to happen. And here I am like just making home cooked meals three times a day, our son actually, for whatever reason, he's just like me. Um, we tried sending him to school and he can't make it two weeks without getting a cold. So he's homeschooled now. Um, he's on a mostly meat diet. He's been doing great the last few years. So, but I just never, like, everyone's like, wow, you, you, you know, you post all these amazing things that you cook from scratch and, you know, you're sprouting grains and you're fermenting food. And why are you still not healthy? Like, why are you always sick all the time still? And I'm like, I don't know. I just don't know. And uh, so the last three years prior to starting carnivore, I started having a lot of like autoimmune symptoms. I'd get rashy. I'd run these low grade fevers all the time. The acne was through the roof at this point for no reason, even though I was kind of laying off of the sugar. And I just felt terrible. My guts were a mess all the time. I just, and I would go to the doctors, they'd run tests. Um, they gave me, you know, eight different prescriptions for antibiotics in a year, two different prescriptions for steroids, trying to 
suppress whatever it is that they couldn't figure out what it was. But I was, you know, I wanted to drop dead by four o'clock every afternoon. I just felt so terrible. I'd be running this low grade fever. And uh, Easter of 2022 came around and I made the kids Easter baskets and I sat upstairs and started eating chocolate like it was a drug. And I just, I had like a hangover for two days and I hadn't drank alcohol. It was that, that pure refined sugar that I hadn't had in so long just hit me and I, it was awful. And I just, I felt sick for weeks. And finally I was like, my joints, my elbows started aching. My knees were aching. And I was like, I, I feel like I'm 70. What is going on? And that's when I was like, that's it. I, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm just going to go all meat. One of the things that that's kind of interesting is, you know, you're trying to do this really healthy diet. You said, you, you know, you're making your own food, you're sprouting grains and you know sprouts and all this stuff. And, and you still, I mean, you've got that sugar, this, you know, demon, it's, it's still there and you can't put it, put it, you know, it's, you, you, you know, you, I find it trying to do the low fat thing, particularly it just, it's just so hard to maintain that over a long period of time. The other thing, if we look at meat, you know, it's like it's got the perfect complement of amino acids. I mean, we, we know it's ideal for human consumption for protein. So why is that? Well, because we're designed to eat it. And then how does meat come? Well, meat comes with fat. And so it's kind of like, why would, why would we be designed to eat the perfect? Why, why would the perfect amount of amino acids come with something that was bad for you? It doesn't make sense. So anyway, I think that's an interesting observation. So you get to, you're kind of at rock bottom, you're just miserable, you're in a chocolate coma and uh, you got all these sort of <laughs> weird symptoms. And so, and so you decide you're, you, this is six months after discovering, you finally decide, Hey, I'm going to try this nutty, crazy, weird thing that I see these other people doing. Yeah. So I had, I had been following you. I'd been following some of the other doctors and the more I followed some of the doctors online, the more other doctors kept popping up. And I was like, wait a minute, why are all these doctors doing this? Um, there's got to be something to it. And I had seen another homeschool mom post her struggles and how she had been carnivore for almost two years now. The one problem I had with it, though, was back in 2021, when I was having some symptoms, the only one thing that the doctors found that was wrong with me was I tested positive for alpha gal. The um, it's supposedly tick born. Mm -hmm. um, now they're saying it comes from maybe a combination of things, but I had a red meat allergy. So I was going to do carnivore without red meat and see how it went. And I just felt like I had no other choice. I was like, I have no other path to go down at this point. I've tried everything. I've done the calorie counting before. I've done the food diary. I've done the points process. I've done the daily exercise. And I'm like, my joints hurt right now. I'm not exercising. I just, I really didn't have any other options. So I'm, I started carnivore on chicken thighs on, um, 80, 20 ground Turkey. I, we do have chickens here. I do live on a farm and I was, you know, I put extra egg yolks and mix them in with the ground Turkey to try to get the fat and stuff that I needed. I did a lot of hollandaise sauce, which is just butter and egg yolks, <laughs> but I did seafood, salmon, as much uh, dark meat poultry as I could. We raised uh, 10 Peking ducks here on the farm and uh, five geese. And that got me through with some extra dark meat. And it took about five months. And my body had cleaned out so much that when I got retested, my alpha gal allergy was gone. Yeah, I mean, I just... That's a great point because there are people that are concerned about this alpha gal and, and classically it's considered about the tick. And I haven't heard, I have not, I, honestly, I have not heard any other causes for that. So it'd be interesting what they're telling you, but it often is temporary. I mean, that's the nice thing about it is all from, for many people, it's, it's, it's a, it's a temporary deal. So that's, I think for anybody who's concerned about that, that's, that's the case most of the time. What, what were the other causes for alpha gal? Now I, I've not heard somebody saying something else. There's a long list of some other insects, but the reason it pops up in certain people, I'd have to go back and, okay, and find so the paper, but it's also people who have taken the um, anti certain antibiotics um, okay. and then get bit by the tick are the ones that have, it's like that perfect storm to create that allergy. Hmm. In my life, I've been on every antibiotic out there. I mean, it's just, um, I eventually quit working for the fire department when my son was born because I just couldn't work in a sick environment. We were both sick. So at one point, I think in a three-year stretch, I had taken 17 different doses of antibiotics for 
I, it was just never, that was the doctor's answer. Here's an antibiotic, go home, rest. Yeah, sure. Not like, okay, why am I sick again in two months? Yes. It's, the it's, average adult doesn't get that sick do, that often. Doctors aren't very good with the why question. Here's an anti-inflammatory. Why am I inflamed, doc? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's bad luck, yeah. whatever, genetics, you know, who knows? You know, that, that's kind of the thing you get. So why am I inflamed? Well, maybe it's because I'm eating this awful diet. So I want to, I'm just kind of curious how you felt on a, because I suspect it'd be quite hard to do a carnivore diet in the absence of any red meat. I think there's some people that have, a few people have tried it or done it maybe, but how are you doing with just turkey breast and ground turkey and eggs? Honestly, I did fine with it. I I tell people that are like, well, I don't do a lot of red meat. I'm like, try it anyway. I, I felt like I did really fine with it. I mean, I healed so fast from so many things within a month, all of my acne was gone. It was amazing to just wake up in the morning and wash my face and not, you know, have my concealer and be, you know, constantly catching all the spots before I let anybody in the world see me. And it's just, I had a few, I had the typical, just, I had, I I didn't want to transition over like six weeks. I did get your book and I saw it and I was like, I need this now. (laughs) So I just like, dosed down on any other carbs that I was eating, which was mostly vegetables at that point, which are still carbs. And I never realized that. I never thought about that before. I just dosed down over a week and hit it. And I kind of felt weird the first, the week of dosing down, I felt a little funky the second week, but I didn't feel bad. And my energy level, I mean, within two weeks, my energy level was through the roof. I wasn't, you know, trying to crawl into bed at six or just walking around in a fog or, you know, just, I, I, it worked really well. I was able to still do dairy, which I think was a key. Um, I stuck with butter and heavy cream and some raw cheeses. And I think that's what helped get me through it too, because that gave me some fat in the diet that I wasn't able to get from like a ribeye. Yeah, fair, fair enough. And, and so, I mean, I assume you, maybe you, you incorporated red meat back into the diet eventually. I mean, what was, uh, what was the impetus to, to want to do that? I did feel like I didn't have the fat. Um, and I didn't want to do as much dairy as I was doing. I do tolerate dairy, but I do think you are getting still those carbs and sugars in milk. We do get raw milk, but there's still some, um, there's still some carbs and things in there. And I really wanted to clean that out. So as soon as I was able to, my doctor, when the level tested down to zero, she gave me a, a sheet. I did one teaspoon of ground beef a day. For a couple of days, I increased it to a tablespoon for a couple of days and I kept going like that. And then finally I was steak ready. And and when you incorporated a decent amount of red meat in, did it, did it improve things or did you feel better? Or how did things go? Honestly, it hasn't changed much. <laughs> I, I did lose weight. I have been, um, I lost my baby weight. Uh, my son's 11. <laughs> so. I'm actually back down to where I was. My um, I'm, I went from 165 down to 137, and I feel great. I mean, I really do. So I think that my body supplemented with my own fat during those first five months. I was like, well, she's not eating enough fat. We'll take some from her hips. Not a problem. No complaints here on that. So as far as uh, you know, what about the round? You know, you, you said you got 11 year old son, husband their thoughts on this whole thing? Are they just like, here's another, another nutty, nutty diet experiment or what were they, what were they thinking? Our son is very, he likes cooking. Um, cause I've been in the kitchen so much his whole life. He likes cooking, but he also likes hunting with his dad. So he's got like the meat eater cookbook and some other ones. So he was very curious about your book because it has a great picture of a steak on the front <laughs> and he read through it and he, he tells people all the time, he's like, we're carnivore, but he, my husband and him still, they both have an incredible metabolism and they do eat potatoes and rice still, but they're really limited on their carbs. My son still has a little ice cream treat here and there. And I try, I don't want to force it on him. He's still a kid and he's seeing other kids do things, but he's 11. He has never had a soda. He doesn't eat a lot of candy. He doesn't eat chocolate. So those few little treats and those little bits that he eats, I feel like are not, he's burning them off because his metabolism is so fast. Um, And my husband doesn't sit still either. So I can't keep weight on him. He's a, he's a retired firefighter turned farmer and he's 
probably got, you know, 10% body fat. So I let him eat what he wants. <laughs> if he still wants potatoes, I make potatoes. Yeah, but they, they didn't give you a hard time about what you're doing, though. They're supportive for what you're doing. Oh, also. no, not at all. My husband is the, my biggest supporter. And as soon as people look at me sideways, when you know, if we go to a party or something, I'll eat something before we leave. And then I'm free to be sociable wherever we go. I don't have to stop and sit and eat. Because usually most entertaining foods are not the foods that I would eat. So when people ask though, why aren't you eating? Why aren't you doing this? Um, he'll jump to my defense before I have to. He's like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how great she's doing. You, have, you know, because we kept a lot of the way that I felt to us. I wasn't, I've been really nervous to do this because I'm not out there sharing my story all the time. It's he's my biggest supporter and he loves it. And actually we talked about he's gonna do a 30 day challenge here soon and just do all meat and see how his energy level is. And if anything changes by giving up his, uh, rice and potatoes. Yeah. Well, good. Well, good luck for him. And so hopefully he does well with that. So, you know, you said you'd been sick all your life, basically. How has that been the last, I guess, year that you've been doing this now? So that's the interesting part. I have to, uh, I do have a, I do have a degree in emergency medicine. I was a paramedic for 12 years. I have to, um, I have to rewire my brain on how I feel about medicine and nutrition. My standard go-to is to, you know, you start getting congested and you get all that stuff in your head and you reach for the Advil and the Benadryl to dry up your runny nose. And, and that was, you know, if it gets bad enough, then I go in and get the antibiotic. I listened to some other doctors on fasting. And so far I've gotten only one cold. And I did what I normally do. I fell back on old habits. I was very congested. I went ahead. I took the Benadryl and the um, Advil for the first two days and was just still like, I felt worse. I went back to the other doctors I followed on the fasting. I stop. I do a 24 to 36 hour fast and it's gone. Like the medicines, I don't, I do water on the water and salt only. And it clears my system out immediately. It's, it's a miracle. Yeah, interesting. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you have previous experience of it, you know, um, lasting a lot longer than that. I mean, somebody would say, "Well, thirty six hours is going to be gone anyway." So, I mean, it's it's hard to say for sure. But let me, you know, the, you know, that's, the one interesting that's thing that's not me. Yeah. Um, if I, I get that tickle in my sinuses and I get that congestion, I'm going down for two weeks minimum. That's what I mean. It's it, why why has my body been like that? I have no idea. There's, you know, most adults have a cold that lasts 24 to 36, maybe 72 hours. Yeah. Well, I I'm mean, down for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it could. I mean, obviously, your immune system plays a role in there, and, and some people have a healthier immune system than others. And I think nutrition is going to. Well, we know that nutrition nutrition plays a role. Interesting, you mentioned is you know you started looking at some some physicians espousing carnivore. You know, myself and there's several other out there, and you kept finding more and more, and that's kind of interesting because there are lots. There are lots of them now that are doctors that are, that are, that are actually acknowledging what they're seeing in front of them. And they're saying, wait a minute, this is, you know, I wasn't taught this in medical school, but it's, it's actually working. And so it's, it's, it's kind of refreshing to see a lot of physicians that are open-minded enough to look at it and, and be objective about it. Since you've gone carnivore, have you had to go back to the doctor? Have you been to the doctor to discuss what you're doing or has that not happened? No, I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> not it's, you're not interested in what I'm they're saying. I'm a little bitter. Anymore. <laughs> you said, I don't, I don't have any interest in what they're selling anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because a lot, I no. see a lot of people and, you know, honestly, I mean, the more, you, I think the less you go to doctors, the healthier you're going to be in many cases. I mean, obviously there's exceptions to that with emergencies and stuff like that, but generally a lot of people, you know, I mean, if we look at it, you know, in the United States, the third leading cause of death is medication errors. And, and some of those are, and many of those are given as prescribed as they're supposed to be. And still people get sick and die from all this stuff. So there's some serious downside to engaging with the healthcare system, I think, particularly with regard to that stuff. So I don't necessarily blame you. I don't, I generally don't go to physicians either. I mean, I've got no, no real reason to. So well, talk to me about any negatives you've experienced thus far by doing this diet. Have you had any significant negatives? I would say a couple, but I was prepared for them. I think following the pod, um, following the podcast, following, I do read a lot of the comments um, on Instagram, especially I'm, I'm on there mostly as uh, for social media. 
And I do, I do read the comments of what people have gone through. So I feel like I was prepared for them. And one of the things I had read was end of week two to week three, um, you have a tendency to have your bowels kind of erupt, should I say. (laughs) And I honestly think that's your guts losing all of that inflammation that they're holding on to. Um, So that hit me and it lasted about a week. But since I had read that, I wasn't like freaking out. Oh my gosh, I have to get off this diet. I just kind of went through it. And I was in some ways, it wasn't any different from before. I, I tend to, I lived on one extreme or the other. And now I'm normal. (laughs) It's amazing when you tell people that you drink a bunch of water and eat meat, they really are concerned about your bathroom habits all of a sudden. I had that week or so about, you know, seven to 10 days where things were a little abnormal, but I was prepared for that. I'd heard that it could happen. So I stuck with the diet and I pushed through it. It cleared up. I was great. I just made sure I drank my water during that time. And then uh, once I got through that one, I had read someone saying about five or six weeks in, you can get a couple of pretty serious, you know, headaches. Um, And that's the same thing as your bowels. We've gotten to the point where now your brain is releasing all that inflammation. So it's not packed in there as tightly as it was before. And um, I did have that. I had about three days where I did take some Advil for a headache, made sure I drank my water, got my salts, and it passed. But I had kind of read that that could happen. So I was prepared for that. Uh, You know, obviously it's, it's variable for some. Some people do have, you know, Different symptoms. So gut symptoms are not that uncommon for, for, for sure, though. That's something. And, and generally, they're, they're very temporarily temporary. So, I mean, you mentioned, you know, your skin obviously cleared up. Your your resilience from illnesses improved. What other sort of improvements have you noticed? Anything like mental health improvements, cognition improvements, body composition improvements? What did what did you what have you seen so far? Well, my eyebrows grew back. <laughs> Okay. Um, I had about a two to three year period there where I was like, where did they go? Um, why is my hair falling out? <laughs> so surprisingly, in the first three months of carnivore, I have actual eyebrows again, which is great. They're not drawn on or tattooed on. <laughs> That's, I mean, I'll just, I'll just um, comment on that because a lot of times it's associated with hypothyroidism. We see loss of eyebrow hair. So it's interesting. So maybe you were hypothyroid at some point. I have, they tested me and I would be low and then... They would say, well, you have to have two low tests in a row to get the medicine. And the next test, I would have popped right back above the line so I wouldn't get the medicine. And, you know, now I'm really thankful that I didn't because I don't think it's an issue anymore. Um, Cognitive, it definitely affects your brain. I'm more organized. I'm more clear in my thinking and just energy level. I My brain always is working. So I always want to do so much. I wake up happy every day. I'm ready to hit the ground running. And I was like that before. And I'd go into the doctors and say, you know, I'm really sick. It's holding me back from all these things I want to do. And, you know, they'd listen to me and they'd run my blood work and it'd be fine. And they, you know, call me back in and they would be like, yeah, you know, here, here's your depression medicine. And I'm like, wait, what? It? No, I'm, I'm sick. I'm really happy. I'm, I have this whole list that I want to do. And I just, you know, can't get past the stuffy nose and the fever. <laughs> And it was just that, you know, that same routine all the time. So, I mean, I just, I feel great though. Overall, just, it's, it's really a miracle. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, and I've heard a lot of people describe it that way. It does seem miraculous in many cases. And so, so they were offering you antidepressants because you had chronic colds. Was that, that's, yeah. just, that seems good. I must've been really sad. I guess. I mean, that's, it's, it's kind of crazy how we did. And, and that can be the default. Well, we can't fix whatever your problem. I know it's depressing here. Here, take this medicine. You won't think about it. <laughs> you know, It's like, here, let's just ignore it. And, and it'll, hopefully it'll go away or you'll just, you'll just stop worrying about it. I guess that's, that's the thought. You know? Yeah. It's kind of a sense. I went in once and uh, I went in once probably like, I think when I was like 38 or 39, cause the acne and stuff was just really bad. And I just wasn't, you know, I, I was really having a lot of mid cycle pain at that point too. And the doctor was like, Oh, we'll just put you back on the birth control. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. I, I'm over 35. Isn't that a risk? And they were like, no, no, it's fine. Just try it. Hmm. And for whatever reason, I, I started taking it. And uh, within like two days, I took one week and I spent that entire week crying. And my husband was like, no, that's enough. That's enough. We're not doing this. <laughs> we just deal with these symptoms otherwise. And so it's funny. They're just, you know, I guess that's a female treatment. Here's a, here's some birth control and depression pills and you just go about your business. Yeah. It's kind of funny. And, and, and again, I'm not a, 
by no means an OB-GYN expert, but my understanding was at 35 and older, and you know, there's an increased risk for things like blood clotting and things like that. So that's one of the reasons they tend not to do that. But it may, maybe that's maybe that thinking has changed. I'm not sure. So today, what is what does a typical diet look like for you? What are you what are you eating on the carnivore diet these days? We don't do a ton of steak um, just because it's pricey. Um, we're trying to get our farm. We have 144 acres. Our goal is to raise our own beef and do uh, rotational grazing and stuff with the cows. But we're also newbies at farming, so we're trying to get our feet under us. We did do um, meat goats, so I do eat ground goats. And we also did the ducks. Um, we've got some meat rabbits we're getting ready to start up here this um, this year. And it'd be great if we could grow everything in house. But right now I eat, I do a lot of ground beef, a lot of ground goats. I still do some ground turkey if I find it on sale. And I usually put a couple fried eggs on top of that in the morning. A little bit of cheese, maybe if I have some. I do like the Icelandic sugar-free, like it's just plain yogurt. It's an organic brand. I do a little scoop of that on the side just for some, some flavor. And I, I do salt and pepper on my food. I don't, you know, that's usually typically allowed. And I'm good for the day. I keep some beef jerky. I keep deviled eggs. I make those with, um, I use Primal Kitchen's avocado mayonnaise. So there's no seed oils. And I, I usually keep a whole tray of deviled eggs in the fridge at all times. If I need a snack, I keep some beef jerky in there if I need a snack. And I usually, I call it my refrigerator bacon. <laughs> it's just a couple slices of bacon in there. You know, if I do need a snack during the afternoon, I'll usually have like a deviled egg or two, maybe a piece of bacon. And then at dinner, I eat whatever meat we're having. With the rest of the family, I just don't eat the sides. Um, we had, I made chicken fajitas last night. So I had a big plate of chicken. The guys added avocado and tomatoes and the black beans to theirs. And that was it. But I don't snack. I was a grazer and I didn't even realize it. Now I'm like, what do I do with all this free time every day? Yeah. It, so, it, yeah. Your, your, your time to eating, you know, whether it's preparation or thinking about it or snacking, right. It goes down dramatically on the side. So you end up with all this extra time. You can be more efficient. You know, I wonder how more efficient people would be in the world if we didn't have people having to take a, take a break every two hours to eat, you know, and that's what we have these days, you know, it's just probably a lot of time being wasted by that. So um, it's, it's amazing how much it frees up your time. It frees up your time tremendously. The grocery shopping, the meal prepping, the planning, the cooking. I mean, I can cook up um, enough meat for myself for three days in, you know, an hour. And I don't have to cook for the rest of the three days. Now I still feed my husband and my son. So, but I've gotten to the point now that they're eating so much meat with me. I can cook up enough food for us for, you know, two to three days at a time. Sometimes you'd mentioned like back, I guess in the early days in your, in your early twenties, you were kind of like the fitness person for the fire department. Are you doing any exercise these days or is that part of the, part of the thing that have you noticed? Yeah. Any, no, okay, no. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that busted, right? That was one of the things that I couldn't understand either about my health. I'm on my feet all the time. Even before we had the farm, I ran a business out of the house. I homeschooled my son. I, I was just always on the move. I have no problem on my Fitbit hitting my 10,000 steps with a piece of cake. Um, now we're on the farm and I'm out there, you know, hauling 50 pound feed bags, hauling five gallon buckets of water. We walk all over the farm. Um, we do a lot of stuff out there. And even though it's not all day long, I'm still on the move. And I thought to myself, why should I have to add in an hour of exercise on top of this? I should be losing weight. <laughs> and uh, I, I haven't really changed my routine. I do try to do like an extra 30 minute workout, like with some weights twice a week of just, you know, direct weight movement. But for the most part, living on a farm should be enough. Hay bales, feed bags, water buckets, all the walking. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a there's thing like we they talk about these kids raised on a farm being stronger than the other kids. And there's a there's an actually a competitive strongman exercise called the farmer's walk where you just hold big, heavy things like, you know, carrying big things in your hands, you know, and it's just you walk around with that. So you're getting you're getting some opportunity to work out. Are you I mean, are you pretty happy with what's going on with your body? Why well, you said you lost the baby weight and things like that. So you're you're as lean as you want to be and that type of stuff. Yeah, I, I really am. I feel like I, I feel like myself again, but I'm not. Um, I guess what I, could, I say is I've lost the weight, but I'm 
I'm bobbering kind of right around that. And I think it's because I am adding muscle. I am toning the muscle and adding the muscle. And so I will, I'll bob back up a few pounds and then I'll kind of bob back down a few pounds as I'm losing some of the fat here and there. So the only thing I really complain about is I I really need new pants. (laughs) I'm not going to buy any. That is one of the cons is you have to buy a new wardrobe sometime, particularly with this, because you your shape changes a lot. So what about like electrolytes and things like that? Do you have uh, just salt and pepper, salt, I guess, salt primarily? Do you do anything else with electrolytes? I found I had gotten some advice from someone else about magnesium. I will say I do take a magnesium supplement every day now, which I had not taken before. Uh, that does make a huge difference. I do seem to feel more energized and, and really like how I feel with that. And I do the salt. That's about it. (laughs) I mean, I really, I do a lot. I do follow, um, I would say the female carnivore doctors hit on the sun exposure a lot more. Um, they seem to be more pro, um, sun or they just promote it more. I, that's huge to me. I can definitely tell December and January is been cloudy and gray here. And I can feel a difference I'm sure my vitamin D level is not as high as it was back in August. So I'm waiting for the sun to pop back out. My, uh, my D minder app tells me I've got six more days to go (laughs) until I hit a, hit a window for some, some D sunlight in this area. But I do, um, I do definitely believe in that. Um, the sunlight is huge. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, we, we, as a species, we, we grew up under the sun. I mean, and, you know, and, and we, uh, it's, it's, I'm sure we lived in some caves and structures at some point we spent a majority of our time outside. I think we out of necessity just cause we didn't have these giant buildings we could, you know, live in like we do today and climate controlled and, and that type of stuff. So very important. How's your sleep? I was never a good sleeper. It's, it's hard to judge right now. We have a new puppy. <laughs> so me and him are outside at 3 a.m. going potty. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I would say my sleep has definitely improved though. I can get deeper sleep now. And I've always, I've always been a very, very terrible, restless sleeper. Um, so I'm not perfect in that, but I can still wake up and feel energized for the day, which is great. I don't feel like I'm dragging on no sleep at all. Yeah, that's important. And you mentioned your son was calls himself carnivore, but he sleeps a little bit of other stuff. How's his health doing? Is it is school performance? Is he playing sports or, I mean, how's he doing? He is great. He gets fueled the same way I do in the morning. And there's a lot of times where we'll go, we'll do school and I'll look at my watch and I kind of feel like a bad mom. I'm like, oh my gosh, buddy, we didn't eat lunch. Like we've got to get something. I don't necessarily eat lunch all the time, but I'm like, I got to get something in you, you know, just to make sure I'm a good mom and giving you three square meals. But he doesn't, he's not begging for it. He's not, he doesn't have an attitude. He's not fussy. He's a very calm. He's a great kid. He really, a lot of people say he's a really great kid. And if he, he does have one favorite breakfast that I used to give him before that I thought was healthy. And that is, um, he has a, he gets a waffle with, um, peanut butter on it and no syrup, but some strawberries on top, which in the nourishing traditions days, I thought this was a good, healthy, you know, he's getting the peanut butter protein and antioxidants from the strawberries. And it's a great way to start the day. And uh, once in a blue moon, he'll still ask for that. And I still let him have it. And he's he's hurting for lunch on those days. I know to be ready because it's just not sustaining him. That's very obvious, the change. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, I guess outside of the peanut butter, there's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of protein and fat in that. But I mean, it's, um, you know, compared to like bacon and eggs, you're, 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 it's not going to be satiating, I don't think. And, and uh, certainly, I guess it's better than... Um, you know, cocoa puffs or something like that, you know, which would be a fairly typical breakfast for a lot of, I don't know if that's even a cereal these days. I remember when I was a kid, it was, but I imagine they're still out there. But, uh, so you said, you mentioned a little bit, you're on social media, did you say Instagram or something like that? Was that, was I was hearing that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm on, I, I follow on Instagram mostly. I'm on Facebook a little bit, but I think the, I feel like the carnivore people are mostly on Instagram. I like following them there. Okay. So my um my name on there though is uh it's our farm name. It's some other farm. Some other farm. Interesting. Okay. Well, nice. And have only you, one in the country. Have, have, <laughs> kind of remember, I, I grew up in a town. It's kind of funny. When, when I was in high school, I lived in this town called Lake Jackson, Texas, and they named some of the streets. 
one street was named this way, one street was named that way, one street was named which way, and any way. It was like I live on this way or that way. It was just kind of funny. Um, it reminds me of that. But did you? So why, now that you've been on social media, even I assume you've been talking a little bit about what you're eating and carnivore um, reception. Have you gotten any of the sort of vegan, vegan trolling type stuff yet, or has it just been pretty positive for the most part? I think people either so. I've had five people kind of jump on and follow me on this journey. Some friends, some neighbors, and I've, I've passed your book around. I've uh, I bought several copies. I actually gave a copy to our butcher that we like down here, and she keeps it on the shelf. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, so we've helped. I've helped a couple other people along, and it's funny they're they're hesitant to even say they're trying it. And it is it is odd. It's not. On social media, there's like this amazing group that you find. So you feel normal on there. And then you go back into your regular life and you're like, I'm the only one. But there are people that are like secretly joining us every day. <laughs> um, so, ha you know, they haven't really posted or said anything about it. Um, so I'm trying to be more vocal about it because I feel like there's so many people out there that could be helped. I think it's it's been a miracle for me and the way things have gone in my life in the last 20 years, trying every diet out there, you know, so I have a record, I have a track record I can attest to. I've never ever lost weight. I've never been healthier. And now I have. So I, I try to share it with people and tell people about it. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you said you did spend a number of years trying a plant-based vegetarian style diet, correct? Yes. And that was when I was a lot younger. Yeah, we see, and it, it seems to be, I mean, we see a lot of young, young females, particularly, you know, teenage, early twenties that try this vegan vegetarian thing, maybe for, maybe for, you know, ethical reasons, perhaps, and, and emotional reasons. And, uh, you know, and then it often doesn't work for them. So that's, that's, you know, there's something we see over and over. I've seen over and over again. I think the not, you know, the more people that sort of come out on carnivore, you know, and there, and there's, and there's now thousands upon thousands of them all have their different social media channels. So then vegans often will show up there to kind of, you know, harass and spend time there, which I think is ultimately good because it keeps them away from other 13 year old kids. You know, they're, you know, they're preying upon the innocent other kids. So they're wasting their time with the carnivore crowd. Cause we know, we already know better. We're not, we're not going to be swayed by that nonsense. And so I'm, I welcome it. Spend all your time, you know, on my my page because you're not going after some 12 year old kid or something like that who who potentially could fall for the nonsense so do you find that um you know you are desiring to 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 add more foods in the diet are you thinking about hey i'm going to start adding fruits and vegetables back in or what are your thoughts around that <laughs> i tried so i did um you know i made i made this uh keto chicken casserole um, for my son and my husband one time. And I usually make a separate little dish for myself that just has the chicken and cheese in it. I just didn't get any done that day. So I, the one that I make for them also has broccoli and cauliflower. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, broccoli and cauliflower aren't that bad for you. Really, they were, you know, I ate a ton of them before. I used to kale everything. So I went ahead and ate it. And it was like, I think I was about four or five months in, into carnivore. And that was when I realized, like, I hadn't had gas. Um, <laughs> no one wants to talk about that. But um, it really turned my stomach. I was like, you could just hear the bubbles. And I'm like, I'm not digesting this. Something's not right. I have had, I did have some chicken noodle soup one day. And the noodles, I think, I was, my stomach, I had a horrible stomach ache for about five or six hours. And I was, again, I'm like, this is not right. So I've tried a couple of times. And then I thought, well, the broccoli and the cauliflower might have been a strong vegetable. So back in December, I did have a little bit of zucchini, just green squash. And that too was like, mm -mm. no, my tummy was like, um, where, where's the beef? We don't want this. Yeah. Yeah. And some people will say, well, we'll, we'll, we'll cite that as a criticism because now you've become intolerant to other foods that would, you know, normally be healthy. I've got like, of all the foods I could add back into the diet, broccoli and cauliflower would be like number 65,000. I mean, it's just like, I never liked those things in the first, but I don't know how people, particularly raw, I don't know how people eat that stuff raw. It's like eating raw cauliflower reminding me of like eating sawdust or something like that. It's just not fun for me, but I, you know, some people want to do that. So, so it's interesting. And, and, you know, having done this for quite a while, there's a lot of people that do manage to successfully reintroduce some foods and they, they kind of stay, you know, maybe they, they say 70, 80, 90% carnivore and that works 
well for them. And so I, I don't discourage people from experimenting with that. But it means you don't. I don't think you need to. I think you can. You can just stay strict carnivore as long as you want, and you can do just fine. That's that's been my observation from now. Literally thousands of people that have, that have done it that way. So it's interesting. I, there- I tell people, I tell people all the time, it does get boring. I will eat uh, two things I've eaten that don't bother me, but I try to limit them a lot is uh, a little bit of blueberries and a little bit of avocado. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't seem to bother my stomach. And, but I, I keep them in limited, limited doses. And I, you know, people ask, well, what about this diet? And I tell them right off the bat, like from someone who used to spend all day, every day in the kitchen cooking up, I mean, just wonderful dishes. It's boring. but after feeling the way I feel, I'm not going to go back to that. I just can't. Yeah. I feel too good. I'm addicted to feeling good now. I don't I don't eat for social or emotional or addiction reasons anymore. I eat just to nourish my body and that's it. Yeah, you know, like every other species on the planet. I mean, I don't think cats are out there eating for, well, I guess some people would argue they like to play with their food a little bit when they get a mouse or a rabbit or something like that. But I mean, generally, I mean, that's what we're eating for is nourishment and and nobody, there's no real emotional attachment to, to food and in other animals, as far as I know, I mean, I, I, you know, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I don't think that exists. I find it not boring, but easy. And I, I, you know, it's, it's, why should you have to go through a three hour process? You know, it's kind of like a, you know, it's like a challenge, I guess, you know, I'm going to make this recipe and it takes three hours and has, 26 steps and 42 ingredients and maybe it's going to come out right if it does pat myself on the back for overcoming that but i'm like i i literally cook stuff with two ingredients steak and some salt and and that's it and it turns out good every time and i enjoy the heck out of it and i i I don't like i said i'm not worried about that I, i you know i talk about people saying well this is so boring i'm like well you know i breathe the same air every single time i take a breath and I'm, I'm not complaining about it. It's like a normal physiologic thing. I don't complain that when I go to the bathroom and I urinate, it's not pink one day and green the next day and blue. And it's just, it's always the same kind of color. And I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I think people that take, you know, t- that take a lot of, uh, I guess, entertainment and normal physiological functions. I mean, like you, you need a more interesting life perhaps. And I imagine living on the farm is pretty interesting. You know, has there been, what kind of challenges have you run into as far as learning how to be a farmer? Any, any big, like, wow, that was wrong. So last year, right before I started carnivore, I thought, let me back up a little. One of the things that led me to carnivore also was two farmers that I follow on YouTube. And I'm not going to name them. Um, one got very sick himself and ended up doing carnivore to heal. And I, that stuck out in my head. Another one is a guy that I follow who does amazing market vegetable sales. And I followed him for years. I wanted to emulate him on our farm. I bought a 16 by 100 foot greenhouse last spring to grow all these vegetables that I was going to, you know, just have this wonderful, huge variety, you know, not just tomatoes, cucumbers, and yellow squash. We were going to have this, this huge variety of all these healthy vegetables. And after I started carnivore, I realized like I've been following this guy for years. He works his butt off on a farm and he grows a ton of vegetables. And if you go back to his early videos, I'm like, I've watched him steadily gain weight. And that was kind of an eye opener for me. Now, I don't know what else is going on in the rest of his life, so I don't want to name him. But I, I just thought something's not adding up here. This guy works his butt off physically and he grows a ton of vegetables. And that was kind of an eye opener for me on this as well. And so now we are, we're going to assemble the greenhouse this year. It got put on the back burner behind the shed and we haven't touched it. Um, We're going to assemble it this year. I'm going to use it to um, grow some stuff for the chickens. I'm going to grow some stuff for the pigs and I'm going to um, use it to house winter meat chickens, hopefully next winter. So we can kind of keep our own internal meat supply going. Um, but it's it's kind of like, oh, what do I do with this thing now? Well, it sounds like it sounds fun. I, you know, like I said, I hopefully one day I'll be in a position where I can have my own animals and stuff. Because I, I, I do have some sort of latent concerns about, you know, whether or not the food supply is going to be what it what it is now. And, and if we're going to be losing opportunity. Um, we are just about out of time, unfortunately, but Allison, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. So some other farms on Instagram, I just found your page and followed you there. So I'll check out your farming escapades. So and your, 
meeting at meat eating escapades. Um, thank you for so much for for coming on and sharing your time with us, and wish you continued success. And hopefully, your husband's experiment goes well for him. And uh, I think thanks. it will. Okay, guys. I really appreciate you uh, having me on. Sure. I just not normally one to overshare too much, but I feel like this this needs to be out there. I agree. I agree, and we're trying to make it happen, and we are. Okay, thanks everybody. We'll see you guys back tomorrow. We got another guest tomorrow. Everybody, take care, everybody. Bye bye now. Take care. Hey, folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30 day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.